from Rick Dior. And now we're going to do metal drums. So this is a brass drum. Well, it's a bronze drum, really. It looks like it's brass, but it's a sonar bronze drum. This is the same drum I used in the other video uh, that we did the rim shots for. This and the Zelkova. And this is a David Garibaldi snare drum. It's a Yamaha. I don't believe this is made any longer. They're both beautiful drums, and they're heavy. So the first drums I wanted to use for this segment, which is part three of the uh, drum set snare drum comparisons, are the little piccolo drums, okay? The, to me, the best piccolos are made from metal. So as you go smaller, the metal sounds better. As you go deeper, I don't like metal drums. So the real deep metal drums, I really have no use for those. They're too loud, they're hard to control. Uh, they just kind of overwhelm everything. So most of my metal drums go from three and a half inches to six and a half at the deepest. Now that's for drum set drums. For orchestra drums, I sometimes I'll use a seven inch deep metal drum, okay? So uh, we'll talk a little about these drums. This is a different kind of strainer for Yamaha. This drum was, I believe, retooled from scratch. I don't know if any of this hardware exists on any other Yamaha drums. But the, the stir-off is okay. It's a little bit wobbly, but it functions, and it goes off really nicely. It's a good tom sound on this drum. We'll muffle this. We might have some residual snare ring from the 10 or so other snare drums I have in here. So. Okay, and then the um, time on this drum. So as you see, they're similar. I tuned them both around the same. There's that one, and here's this one. Now there's a little bit of moon gel on each one of these, and... Um, you're going to want to use that without the moon gel in the snare settings. And again, I have to keep muffling this because you, since they're tuned to the same note, you will get the residual ring from the other drum. So that is um, a biting, cutting sound. It will cut through anything. It doesn't have a lot of depth. These, um, you know, uh, less steep or smaller... Um, drums. In other words, the piccolos have not a lot of low end. and But you can tune them low. This is one of those drums that you could tune it really low and it sounds pretty good. I've used it on some of my other videos. The Brazilian uh, snare drum video, I used this on and you can hear that with brushes and sticks. I tuned it pretty low on that video. Okay, and this one without any muffling. So they both have this kind of annoying after ring that's kind of super high, it's, uh, a lot of harmonics. Uh, so you need to muffle it when you're recording to get rid of that. Both the drums are really loud and like I said, penetrating. They'll cut through anything. As far as weight goes, uh, they're both pretty heavy. This is um, probably around maybe 10 to 15 pounds on the scale here. And this drum, <laughs> this drum's a tank. Since it's bronze, it's probably around at least 20, 20 to 30 pounds. I'm not sure how heavy it is. Okay. Now, one thing about the metal drums, they are going to be heavier mostly than, than the wooden drums, especially the cast drums, you know, that are bronze or copper. Uh, it's just more weight there. All right. Some of the Ludwig metal drums are pretty light. We'll talk about those later. Now, this drum has an interesting feature where it has uh, a sort of a cover for the vent, one of the vent holes that you could put in there. There's actually several vent holes. There's three on this drum, okay? And there's one little plug, unless I'm missing one, which is a possibility. Uh, I've experimented with that. I find uh, no difference in sound. I'll show you. Maybe you guys can hear a difference in sound. So this is with it. This is without it. So I don't know. Maybe you can choose where the uh, where the air comes out. Maybe it'll cool you off during a gig. But anyway, so that's always been there. Uh, and maybe, like I said, maybe I'm missing one. So okay. Uh, and this drum is blue, so it's uh, it's kind of pretty. 
we just lost our moon gel. And the snares are the original snares, okay? And this drum is all original as well. Oh my God. And these are, I think I changed these snares out because I like these better, but I have the originals. This drum's in mint condition. So the only problem about this drum, this sonar drum, if you can find them, they're gonna be super expensive. And since they're all so old from the 70s, they might not be in good shape. This one's in mint condition. It's, it's, it's just perfect. And this one is as well. All right. And this, I'm using the same head combination, Remo Ambassadors, on both of these. Okay. And Diplomat uh, snare heads on the bottom. Now, as far as sensitivity goes, these drums are pretty sensitive, but they start to lose their sensitivity at really soft volume. So you're not getting a lot of snare there. So the, you normally on a piccolo like this, the snare starts activating after you get away from the edge. Okay, and now this drum. It's a little more sensitive, uh, absolutely, and a little louder as well. Uh, now, since it's a drum set snare video, you might be asking, well, why isn't he using a drum set. Well, I'm not using a drum set so you really can hear these drums clearly without much interference. I'm trying to keep the other snare drum interference down, but uh, on a drum set, you'd get all kinds of residual tom noise from the snare drum, and that actually changes the sound of the snare drum, but I don't know what kind of drums you guys are playing. It's all different drums, so that adds to the depth of the drum. Uh, it could be good, it could be bad. So that's why I'm doing this away from the drum set, okay? So we're, we're going to put another couple drums up here, and we won't cut the, the video. We'll just do it right away. Now, here is a really pretty drum. This is a Ludwig brass, all brass drum from the 1920s. It's a classic. This is what they would, would be considered a black beauty, but it's not black, so it has no coating on it. Uh, I've never seen another one of these that was all brass, but maybe you guys have. It says Ludwig somewhere. Oh, yeah, right over the strainer. I guess if you zoomed in, you could see it, you know. But um, And it's got those straight rims and those claw hooks that we talked about on the Radio Kings that I so dislike. So I've replaced a few of these because uh, they break, and I couldn't match up the color because the patina from, from a drum being 100 years old, liter literally, uh, is you can't match that, okay? I've been looking for them on eBay and stuff, but they're hard to find this this old. So I changed them out with a couple pearl clips, and they work. These rims uh, will uh, bend when you do rim shots, and the drum is pretty thin. This one's in great shape. Now, the um, throw-off on this drum is like a tiny little thing. You see it? So this, this throw-off is not very well functioning, just like most of the old throw-offs on the old snare drums. So we'll play a little for you. Let's turn this off. Now on top of this one, I have a Diplomat Ambassador Hazy Head uh, because I thought it sounded better on this drum. The drum's so thin that I put a thinner head on there. Now, this is, the snares do deactivate all the way on this drum, but they never get really tight. It is a beautiful drum, uh, beautiful sounding for certain things. Definitely not an all-round drum. If we muffle it a little, Okay. Now, on these drums, I try not to tune them too tight, because if you do, you'll break your clips. So just remember that. Both sides. All right? And you can go through a lot of those clips quickly. So that is an old Ludwig brass, uh, Black Beauty without being black. And it's not engraved except for a little Ludwig thing there. Okay. Now, here's a really neat drum. This is a Leedy snare drum. It's beautiful. It's a more modern leady. I don't know exactly where it came from. So it has the same throw-off, the trick throw-off that my birdie had that I showed you guys in part two, okay? 
and just be careful that doesn't break. This is a great drum. I love it. It's one of my favorite metal drums. It rings forever. And this is one of the only metal snare drums I have, besides maybe one of my Ludwigs, that I would consider a great all-around snare drum. The problem is the Ludwigs, the throw-offs aren't great on those. The throw-off on this one is really good. Now I say all around drum because it's it, you can tune it deep and it still sounds good. And I tuned this deep on purpose for you guys today so you could hear it. You can crank it up too, all right? It's got a really big sound and it's got a nice wet snare sound. If I tighten the snares, Okay, it's very, very unique sounding. Now, if you guys have ever watched my Caliente snare video um, that I did for my book Broad Strokes, this is the drum I'm using where I'm going. Okay, you heard a little snare activation because I brought up the, the snare mechanism here. So uh, it's, a, it's just a really, really nice drum. So this is a leady metal snare drum. It's pretty heavy. And it's a modern leady. You can see the, the different logo there, OK? As far as snares go, I put some pure sound snares on here. And um, that's it. It's a great drum. OK. Now, let's show you this one. This is a Gretsch snare drum, okay? A really heavy chrome over brass, I believe, Gretsch drum. It's got that kind of flimsy strainer we talked about on my other wood drum, like this, okay? So these never feel secure to me. Uh, they always feel like they're just gonna fall right off, all right? But this one's been on here. This, this drum, I believe, is from the 1960s. And it's, it's a nice drum. Probably needs a new, a little bit of a new head here. This drum does not sound good at all ranges. If you tune it up, it definitely chokes right away. Uh, all the metal Gretsch drums I've ever played are like that. So you, you would tend to want to tune this one a little lower. And it's great for jazz. Uh, this is the drum that would have come with um, like a, a 80s kit or late 70s kit. It's not a round badge drum. It's got the square badge, as you probably can see there. Okay? But it is pretty old. It's probably 70s or 80s. So there it is. It's a little lower. And no muffling. If we put a little muffling on there, what do we got here? Okay, so it's a good jazz drum, not a good rock drum. Uh, it's it's honestly it's not a great drum. So uh, the wood Gretsch snare drums to me are much more desirable than the metal ones, sounding wise. I know there's a lot of collectors out there, but but I'm not a big fan of the the metal drums, the sound of them, and they're very heavy, but they just don't sound great. Okay, it's a well built drum, you know, um, it's not it's not beautiful by any means, but super heavy. Okay. So that's the Gretsch snare. Now we're going to pause for a minute because I'm just going to do a quick setup of a couple drums I really want you to check out. A couple very heavy drums. So just give me one second. Okay, I'm back and I have two really wonderful drums right here. These are brass drums. This one on my left, your right, is a very old, well, say very old, it's probably 70s vintage, maybe early 80s, Slingerland Brass Drum. Pretty rare. I've never seen another one like it. It's a 12 by 7, a strange size. And this on my right, your left, is a GMS Bell Brass snare drum. So this drum, um, 
is really heavy. It's the second heaviest drum I have. It's 35 pounds. I'm not even going to lift it up. And uh, the only other drum I have that's heavier is the Clevelander snare drum. If you watched my um, orchestral snare drum video, you saw that drum. That drum's about 40 pounds. Okay, so this has some weight to it. And that's because it's cast uh, brass, bell brass, what they make bells out of. Um, you know, the big, like the Liberty Bell in Philly. So, uh, you know, that that's heavy stuff. And they do make brass shells that heavy. Uh, Fred Hinger, the, the um, timpanist, I studied with him, and he showed me a sewer pipe drum back in the day that was, man, that thing had to be 50 or 60 pounds. I should have bought it, but it was incredibly heavy, and it sounded so amazing. So I'm always keeping my eyes out for uh, bell, bell brass drums. I just think they sound great. They have unique qualities uh, for any kind of metal snare drum. So we'll let you hear these. Uh, I'm going to muffle one at a time. So first we'll do the tom sound. That's a really ringy, powerful drum. Very, very loud. And this drum on Tom. Now you see there when I play it loud that the snares are activating a little. That's the old uh, Slingerland strainer. You see that there. Kind of their uh, post clamshell. That also had issues like that. So what you have to do with that, it actually works backwards. So you have to, you move it clockwise, and that loosens it, okay? So it's, it's not very intuitive. You see that? All right, so you really have to fine tune it. So when you hit it hard, the snares don't activate. And then when you put the snares on, you might have to, you might have to adjust it again, which is a pain in the neck. That being said, this is a great drum. Um, different than this drum where it's, it's drier. Once again, we're dealing with that. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, let me play that snare for you before I muffle it. So we'll tighten it up. On these brass drums, especially the deep ones, like I said before, the ring sometimes overpowers the sound of the drum. So the deeper you get, the more ring you get, and it's louder. So that's the problem with deep metal drums, is that they ring so much, it literally overpowers the, the snare. I have, um, I think I told you guys in another video, I have the really deep sonar drum, uh, which is super heavy, the old ones from the 70s, just like my piccolo. And the ring on that thing's so powerful that it just basically overwhelms the whole drum. So it's almost always like a tom sounding, okay? So um, I'm just keeping it because it's worth a lot of money, but I never use it. So eventually I will sell it. So here's this drum muffled. We'll tighten it up a little. So you see there, the drum's very sensitive. You still get a lot of ring. So sometimes you might have to use two moon gels or two whatever, <laughs> because these metal drums ring an awful lot. Okay. That's better. Okay, and on this drum, with some muffling and the snare sound, we'll do it without muffling first so you can hear it. So we got a lot of tom sound there, right, because of the 
the ringing, ringiness, the heaviness of the shell, and the deepness of the shell. Now we muffle it, that gets better. And also we need to put this on here. Should have done that. Really loud drum. It's a great rock drum. It's actually an all-round good rock drum. It just cuts through everything. And it's small, so, um, you know, it's a 13, okay? I think it's a 13, maybe it's a 12. I don't know, I'll have to measure it. Now the snares on this GMS strainer, you know, this is the GMS strainer that I don't really like. Okay, the same one. It's just got a weird movement to it. And sometimes the snares will come loose on it. So you just gotta fish around. There we go. It's a fine uh, line there. So not, not the best strainer. But the drum is, is sensitive, very sensitive. So that's super useful. Okay, so these are uh, two heavy brass drums. So it's good to have one of these in your arsenal. Uh, a lot of times, if you're in a studio and you know the snare sound isn't making it, you take one of these out and all of a sudden everybody just lights up. It's like, that's it, that's the sound, okay? No EQ, no anything, just, uh, just the drum itself. So we're going to uh, switch out these, and next we're going to do the Ludwig drums, okay? So stand by. Okay, we're back with two of the most legendary drums ever made. Well, two different kinds of the most legendary drums ever made. These are Ludwig Superphonics. One is chrome over brass, this one to my right, uh, and this one is just chrome, okay? So uh, all the way through, and they definitely sound different, and I'm going to let you decide which one you like better. Let's talk about them uh, first. So this is probably the most popular snare drum uh, ever made. In other words, these have been sold, I think more of these have been sold than, than any other snare drum ever. And it's obvious why when the Beatles came on the scene with Ringo Starr, everyone wanted Ludwig drums. This is the snare drum that would come with that set, a superphonic, okay? And it's famously was used by Steve Gadd uh, for most of his early career uh, on almost every single, I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of uh, records he played on, but if you, if you heard that, you were listening to a superphonic and many, many other drummers. So let's talk about the differences. This is uh, what I've been told over the years and, and, and read about and research. I hope it's right. <laughs> Don't get mad if it isn't, but I believe it is. So this is a superphonic chrome over brass. The way you can tell, first of all, it's heavier. Second of all, there won't be any pitting on the chrome. There might be some on the lugs, the lug casings, I mean, but not on the chrome itself. Okay, it's very common just for the all chrome steel drums uh, that had the chrome covering to oxidize and just look awful. And, and that was actually never fixed. And there's so many drums from that era that just look disgusting now, really. But these drums didn't do that. They did stain a little. This one's super old. Okay, I believe this drum was made in, in the 1960s. It does not have a serial number uh, that I can see. It might. I have to look closer at my eyesight isn't what it used to be. So it's hard to date, but I believe it's a 60s drum because it has this baseball bat muffler and the old Ludwig stamp. Okay, so you can probably research that online. Let me know. Uh, you can see the muffler in there, hopefully. A little closer for the close camera. And uh, I never use that internal muffler, but I leave it on. It doesn't rattle. And the strainer is the old style strainer. That's another way you can know it's an older drum because the newer ones have the different logo. I'll show you that in a minute and have the newer style strainer. I actually prefer the older strainer. It's, it's much, uh, much smoother. I think it's made out of better quality metal and it lasts. I've had several of the newer ones break, okay, over the years. So I use this drum for gigging. I have several of them. I probably have four of these, uh, chrome over brass and three of the regular just chrome drums, steel drums. I like them a lot. They're, they're basically the Desert Island drum. You can hammer a nail with one. It's sort of the equivalent of the um, 
Shure SM57 microphone, you know. It's that microphone. You can use it as, as a weapon to hammer nails to build your, your home, and you can use it to record or, or perform music. Same thing with this snare drum. Nothing spectacular about it. It just sounds good. It's a good all-around drum. It's not real loud, and it feels good when you play it. It's very cushy. It's like, you know, putting on sweatpants, okay? So this version of it is chrome over steel, and this one's in really good shape. Now, this might be chrome over brass, but I doubt it because it's much lighter. It hasn't, it's just pitted a little, but it also has the old strainer. Hopefully you can see that there. And the same badge. See that? So it's probably maybe from the 60s or the 70s, but sort of the same era as this other drum. But, um, but it's definitely lighter and it's different. So, and it's got not the baseball bat muffler, but the circular muffler. So I would say this is a little bit newer uh, and, and it's, it's lighter. So it's probably not chrome over brass, okay? And they definitely sound different. So we're gonna to listen to that right now. Let me buckle it in here. Okay, good. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna check the tom sound as we've been doing. So here's that, let me muffle this other one. This is no muffling, okay? That's a classic snare drum tom sound right there. Generic, clean, pure, okay? So that's the chrome over brass, and here's the, just the, the chrome over steel. So not as much, what I'm hearing here anyway, is not as much depth, a little bit of a higher twang, not as pure. I'll go back and forth, we'll get some sympathetic vibrations. But. Rim shot. Tom sound. Rim shot. Tom sound. Now listen to the tom sound. Tuning is a little bit different. Sorry about that. I had them tuned, but they've moved. I'll bring it up just a little. It's actually dived today. Uh, let's see. Key. This one's pretty much at its highest point, unfortunately. The head is stretched. Now, these are both eight lug drums, by the way. All these Ludwigs are eight, eight lugs, okay? One thing you got to watch out for on these Ludwigs is the when the strainer's off, it'll buzz. Okay, you can try to take some moleskin and, and get into the nooks and crannies. They all do that. For recording, that's not good, all right? Um, also, the throw-off, this is important. This part here will hit the, the lug casing. Not a good design, Ludwig. What were you thinking? So you might have to bend it forward carefully or you'll snap it. Okay, you see how that's hitting that? And that will buzz. All right? So that's a problem with these. Uh, it's just, you know, they designed it just funny. We'll see when we look at the super sensitive in a minute. All right? All right, now let's put on the snares. This is uh, no muffling. Snares. Rim shots. It's a 
great sound. Classic. Okay. Same thing on this drum. Snares. All right. Dryer, for sure. There is a huge difference in the sound of these Superphonics. So if I was going to buy one, and I really wanted one, I would get, I would pay the extra money and get a chrome over brass. It's going to cost you probably three or four hundred dollars more than one of these. Okay, but it's worth it because it sounds much better. All right? As opposed to, it just kind of doesn't have the life. All right? Now, when we muffle it, uh, we won't go that far. I'm not going to use moon gel on these. I'm going to use these. This is what I usually use. The moon gel is about worn out from doing all these videos. <laughs> and I keep stepping on it. So, all right. So here, here's it muffled. Now that's the wet sound. And if I dry it up just a little, Now, one thing about these Ludwig drums, they're not very sensitive. So you lose your snare sound. I'll play over the snares here. As you get close to the rim, you lose it. So you need to play a little out from the rim, like, like that. OK? All right, and we'll try that on this drone with the muffling. And soft. So you'll notice there, there's not that much a difference once you muffle them. This one, some of you might like better. There you go. Okay, but overall, I prefer the chrome, uh, chrome over brass. Now, let's uh, keep the chrome over brass on here for a comparison, and let's retire this guy. So this is a Ludwig super sensitive snare drum, the more sophisticated brother to the superphonic. So this drum has a very sophisticated strainer, as you see there. It's very adjustable, and it's very much smoother than the regular Superphonic. Uh, the throw-off is also better. It doesn't almost touch the lug like the other one. You see it here. Okay, and it's very quiet. So this is a very desirable drum. So if you're looking for a, a Superphonic and you have some extra money, Spend another couple extra hundred dollars and get a, a super sensitive. The snare mechanism is better. Now, I've put a calf head on this to show you what that might sound like. I use this drum a lot with brushes, and I really like it. Um, it's very, very similar to this drum, though, but it will sound different today because of the calf head. This is also chrome over brass. It's about the same weight. And um, let's make sure that the strainer is not hitting that. This is a little bit of a later date because it's got that round knob, okay? And let's just see what this sounds like without any muffling. You see right away it's somewhat drier with that calf head than this one. And this again. So that calf head will give you more impact, but it'll be a drier sound. It won't be as uh, you know, that wet, bright snare sound that we've been getting. Now, you usually do not have to muffle calf, but we'll show you what that sounds like. So 
So if you don't want that extra ring, you can muffle it. Do not use moon gel because it'll ruin a calf head. Okay. So that is a super sensitive, a Ludwig super sensitive snare drum. Great drum. Very sensitive. <laughs> All right. We'll put this away. And we're going to actually show you a drum that is um, a great deal financially. So this is a Ludwig Acrylite, okay? Uh, I'm not sure why they call it Acrylite because it's not much lighter than the regular Superphonic. But um, it is aluminum, which is uh, supposedly a little lighter, but it, it's not. It's literally the same weight. Not as the chrome over brass, but as the regular steel. All right, and um, it's pretty much the same drum strainer. This is a later Ludwig model, obviously, because that you see the Ludwig logo there. That's that's later on. That's probably from the 80s. Okay, and then we have the round muffler. All right, and it's actually pretty similar to the Superphonic, but um, it's much much cheaper. Let's hear that on snare, no muffling. I'm going to muffle this. Okay, so lots of snare sound. Now, if we tighten that up a little, it'll sound like this. So a jazz tuning will use a looser snare sound in general. Kind of goes well with those old Ks. Uh, and a rock tuning will use generally a tighter snare sound. Okay? Generally. You could do whatever you want to do. So uh, this drum is very inexpensive. Sometimes I'll find these at flea markets. A lot of times I will. This drum I think I picked up for like 50 bucks. I have a few of them. And they're, uh, they're a decent all-round drum. So... So I would suggest um, picking one up and have it laying around just in case, like an extra drum, okay, for you. And there's really not much to say about it other than it, it's, it's decent. Good. All right. Now let's show you a few more. Put this down here. Okay. There's also uh, several Ludwig drums like this. It's kind of a black sparkle finish. That's sort of a mix of the Acrylite and the chrome drum, kind of right in the middle there. Again, you can find these at flea markets and pawn shops and stuff like that. So. Now this drum definitely needs some muffling. It's got some un undesirable overtones. It's also thinner sounding, but you can get it up a little higher. Unfortunately, it's not very sensitive, so you can hear. Pretty much dead in the water, uh, sensitivity-wise. But if you need something to practice on, that's a good bet. And again, these are budget drums, so this drum would probably run you in a pawn shop, maybe 50 bucks. Get lucky at a flea market, probably less than that. Okay, eight lugs, pretty much the same design as the... Superphonic and the Acrylite, just a different shell. Okay, and then finally, this is not a metal drum, but it's a Vistalite drum, plastic, kind of like what John Bonham used to use. Okay, and Led Zeppelin. So uh, this drum I've got, I got for ten bucks <laughs> at a flea market, and it needs some work. Needs some TLC. It needs new rims. The shell's in good shape, though. Uh, these are actually interesting sounding drums. We'll play this one for you. It's pretty much all snare, you know. Uh, we'll tighten that up just a little. Almost here. 
Black Dog or Moby Dick on this. This is a really cool drum to use for rock. All right, it, it, the Vistalite sound is, is, is a strange sound, but it records really well. So like when you're playing them, you're like, Ugh. and then when you record it, it's like, oh, okay. So it's a nice tonal quality, <clears throat> excuse me, and different than this drum. I'm gonna have to muffle this down to match it. But if you listen to the difference, it's pretty cool. And this one. It's great. You really dig into it. It's got a good feel. It's not sensitive. Uh, it's pretty much hit it as hard as it as hard as you can that kind of drum all right so a ludwig vistalite snare they're all the same size five and a half by 14. you can get them deeper but these are the sizes that i like good all right so let's recap what we've been talking about these past three videos first of all when you buy a snare drum you're looking for certain things so number one thing you're looking for is functionality so it's got to have a good strainer okay that's quiet and not this one, but, you know, like the Zelkova or the Trick Strainer. Easy to use and won't break on you. Because uh, you're going to be turning that thing on and off thousands of times. It needs to have good lug. Good lugs, good casings. Don't buy the straight rims. And don't buy the clip. Uh, the clip, the rim clips that go into the lug casings. Because they will break. Okay? No matter how nice the drum is, don't. You'll be sorry. Uh, it's going to be a pain in the neck. Use die cast rims whenever possible. So if your drum does not come with them, replace them. That makes a huge difference for rim shots, uh, cross rim clicks, and also makes tuning the drum a lot easier because it's heavy, all right? Um, you can buy the old Radio Kings if you really want, but there's modern versions of steam bent shells. Uh, companies like Doc Sweeney, they make them without reinforcement rings and they're perfect. So I'd highly recommend you purchase those over the old drums which are going to be there's going to be problems with them I pretty much guarantee okay if you're a collector of course you're not going to be playing them much so that's totally fine obviously okay and then we also um, want to talk about the feel how does that drum feel when you hit it is it is it mushy does it suck you in or does it like respond right away and make you want to hit it again okay is it feel good to play it that's the main thing so is it responsive, again, sensitive, and feel good to play? And are, is the dynamic range really clear at all ranges from super loud to super soft? All right. Um, again, looks, you know, that's up to you. But you, if you want a drum that looks good, that's fine. Just make sure it sounds good, too. The last thing is weight. Again, I prefer drums with more weight. That's something that um, we talked about earlier. To me, they just feel better. They're not going to move around when you're playing. Believe me, I know that sounds funny, but if you're hitting really hard on stage and it's a light drum, that thing will bounce around on the stand, too. And you don't want that, okay? So the drum needs to have some weight. And some drums are so light that um, they're just not worth, worth playing. And you can buy those specialty drums, but you don't want to use those as your main snare. So your main snare should be, I think, a 5.5 by 14. And then your extra snare should be a six and a half by 14. And if you have the money, you want to buy a metal drum. So buy a wood drum first. And then if you have the money, buy a metal drum. That's five and a half by 14. Okay, that will be your other drum. To me, wood drums are more versatile for everything. They just sound better. Okay, they're, um, they're, they're capable of that great crack, but the ring... Uh, is more manageable for recording as well. Uh, metal drums are great as well. Um, they're just much louder, typically, and they ring longer, and the ring is harder to control. So there may be some weird overtones, which set your other drums off. So that's what I, I suggest. Of course, you'll do whatever 
you want. And, um, you know, someday you'll have a ton of snare drums and it won't matter. So I hope you enjoyed these videos and I'll see you next time.